feel uncomfortable enough to talk about it now. So wait. Wait, so does this mean you're a woman now? We'll get to that in a minute. We gotta do the serious bit first. Why? <laughs> okay, well, honestly, this might be a little bit controversial. I cross-dressed on Twitch for years. <laughs> After doing it for a meme, I wanted to explore my gender a bit more. People have been making egg jokes or saying I'm on HRT for years. And kind of because of that, a lot of the trans community started popping into streams or like seeing my videos or interacting with me. And that had never happened to me before. And I learned a lot. And um, some of it seemed a little bit too interesting. <laughs> it felt a bit like I uncovered a part of myself that I'd be purposefully just shutting down for as long as I can remember and never questioned why. I have this notes page on my phone from over a year ago now with a handwritten note of like pros and cons list of taking HRT. And when I went to go fill out the cons list, there wasn't much I could come up with, so I started. The question is that the word femboy falls completely out of use by like 2026. No one's gonna be using it. It's gonna be something else. And I'm not even saying it's gonna fall back to anything else. It's gonna be a new thing. I don't know what yet. No chance. Dude, it's gotta. Because think about it. There's a precedent set now. Name a femboy that's been a femboy for longer than five years. I will wait. You wanna know why they're not femboys now? They're trans. That's what it is. It's not even a twink death thing. You didn't make it five years, did you? No, I made it four. That's why I said five. <laughs> Boys aren't real, or at least they shouldn't be. Am I right, fellas? Or not fellas? Soon to be not fellas? All right. <laughs> so there's a lot to unpack there. But basically, I want to talk about AGP, Fenster, the death of femboys, egg culture, and why this is problematic. Because, okay, so if you don't know who Finster is, um, he is a uh, gender fluid person, transgender person who just came out as trans very, very recently. I I, I played his coming out vi video. And I think he is still using uh, he, him pronouns or any pronouns, whatever, right now. So that's why I'm using he, him pronouns. But for the longest time, uh, Finster was a, a Twitch streamer, femboy, crossdresser, and his whole shtick was to crossdress, look like a girl, and then sort of like, you know, trap guys or make jokes and sort of pretend to be a girl. And, you know, this was his, his, his whole shtick. And his claim to fame was that he was more passable than many other trans women, actual trans women, trans identified males. Um, but he just said that he was a boy, he was just a crossdresser, he was just a femboy. Um, but you know, as he said in the video, um, you know, trans people started coming onto his stream and making egg jokes, you know, asking about whether he's on HRT for like the longest time for years. And then he also started dating a trans woman named Icky, who's also a trans content creator. And I think this is just like the perfect storm to illustrate an analogous phenomenon that we see in the F to M um, world of trans men, trans masculine uh, females. And this sort of, because in the trans masculine world and the female world, the queer female world, there, there's, there's this concept of the death of lesbian. Like wh where did all the butch lesbians go? Well, <laughs> People have been asking this question um, in the butch lesbian uh, community for a long time. And the answer as to where did all the butch lesbians go is that they all got transed. Um, there's just sort of this assumption that if you are a mask presenting um, you know, female, then you're you're trans or non-binary or trans masculine. And it's just like, when are you gonna start on testosterone? And there's sort of like this disappearance of your typical or, or your, your your traditional you know mask butch lesbian because you know and there's this there's this butch lesbian to trans uh, masculine pipeline of like going on testosterone, um, but I think there's a similar phenomenon happening in the trans feminine side of things where there's this femboy cross-dresser to trans pipeline and you know in in that video um that i i showed that clip finster predicts this you know he basically says that you know he thinks that in like you know that in in a few years there like aren't going to be femboys anymore because they're all going to be trans and he's sort of joking about it you know haha so funny and, you know boys don't exist but i think this 
illustrates something that I, 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 I think is concerning because, you know, as I've talked about many times on this channel, I believe the most common um, reason behind gender dysphoria and trans feminine people is autogynophilia. Um, and as such, you know, th this creates a sort of desire for transition, a desire for feminization and attraction to oneself as feminine. And this is a, a form of heterosexuality that's been inverted such that you, you're attracted to femininity, but you also want to be feminine. That is the core of the phenomenon. And this drives a, almost all you know, cross-dressing behavior we see in asexual, bisexual, and, he and, he and heterosexual males. Now, there's a difference with homosexual males who are often have a more innate, natural femininity that is hard to repress, and that can lead to a desire for transition. But in asexual, bisexual, and transsexual, or asexual, bisexual, and, and, and heterosexual males who have an attraction to femininity insofar as they're gynophilic, they're attracted to the feminine, that manifests itself in an inverted erotic target identity inversion such that you're attracted to femininity, but then that, that target location of where your attraction is, it gets inverted inward such that you're attracted to being feminine yourself, and that drives transition. Now, historically, you know, it, it, it hasn't been like, you know, that common to transition, like trans people have been a pretty small minority. But I think, you know, as we start to see like the prevalence of trans culture online and this whole idea of like egg culture, I think it's so problematic because like there, I think people are being pushed down the medical pathway for reasons that, you know, are concerning. Like, you know, you saw that um, Finster had this list of the pros of HRT and the cons of HRT. Well, he said he couldn't think of any cons. Well, what about losing your fertility? I mean, there's a lot of people who, when you're that young, you don't think about wanting a family. You don't think about wanting kids. But then as you get older, you know, in, in your 30s, you start realizing like, hey, I actually want a family. And that I, I, you know, the dog isn't going to do it. The cat isn't going to do it. You actually want a family. And when you go on hormones for years and years and years and years and years, and you don't bank sperm, there's a risk of becoming infertile. Um, and that's just one, you know, one possible con. There's also other cons like, um, you know, there, there's a risk of deep vein thrombosis. There's, you know, there's all, there's, um, there's health ramifications. Like I personally experienced the negative health side effects of going on estrogen. Like th this is not some incidental thing. And also you become a lifelong medical patient because if you're going to be on estrogen for your entire life, you have to, you know, take a corresponding testosterone blocker. You're going to take a testosterone blocker for your entire life. You're going to be part of the medical system for, for, for your entire life. You have to go get blood work every three months for your entire life to make sure all your levels are there. <laughs> you know, you're, you're sort of medicalizing yourself and, and that, and that is no, like, and, and, and like, that is a very serious thing. So the fact that Finster, like his only pro was like, I want to be pretty and I want to have boobies. <laughs> I mean, that's like, that's like the, the mindset of an autogynophile where you sort of only think about the benefits in terms of, you know, your desire for feminization. And, and you don't think practically in terms of what are the consequences of being a medical patient for the rest of your life. Cause if, you, cause, cause it's not healthy to be on testosterone blockers for your entire life. So now you have to get an orchiectomy or, or, you know, it's, as, as it's very common, even if you don't start off with a desire uh, for bottom surgery, going down the full transition, the full medical pathway, it can induce a desire for bottom surgery. Your dysphoria can get worse. Like this is very common. You start transition, you start so social tr transition, and then suddenly your dysphoria is worse. And now you want you know, uh, facial surgery. Now you want breast augmentation. Now you want to get a trach, a, a trach shave. Now you want to get vocal 
feminization surgery. Now, now you want to castrate yourself. Now you want to invert your penis. Now you want to get, you know, all these surgeries. And, and often the, the root cause of the dysphoria doesn't go away. It gets worse because you start obsessing over these details of, of, of your body and your and, and your dislike of your body becomes worse now that, that that doesn't happen all the time and i also want to be clear that i'm not saying that adults who give rational informed consent shouldn't be able to you know get all these procedures done but i think you know we're making light of it and i think it needs to be taken more seriously now ultimately i'm i'm a libertarian when it comes to bot for adults making autonomous decisions about their bodies, but I kind of think of it as elective cosmetic surgery. Like just like you know, you can get a nose job, you can you know get body modifications, you can get tattoos, you can you know turn yourself into a lizard or a cat or well whatever. Like, but I, I think we need to think about this in terms of elective cosmetic surgery and not necessarily life-saving medical care because that is like very different like what finster's talking about you know a, a desire to be pretty a desire for boobies that doesn't sound like life-saving medical care to me that sounds like autogonophilia manifesting in a desire for feminization due to having an inverted erotic targets which is an inverted form of of, of heterosexuality it is a manifestation of a sexual orientation, which is an attraction to feminization. And this is, you know, played out in the fact that um, what Finster has, in my opinion, is autogynoandromorphophilia. So he's clearly attracted to transsexual women because he's dating transsexual women. Well, often when you have an attraction to transsexual women, you want to be trans as transsexual women. This is why a lot of eggs, a lot of eggs date trans women before they realize that they're trans. That, and that's why they watch trans porn. That's why they watch sissy hypno. That's why they, you know, are, you know, allies. They're super strong allies. They're interested in trans culture. They get into egg culture. They get into femboy culture. They get into these online trans spaces. They get into trans activism and trans right. These eggs, that is often a manifestation of a sexual attraction to transsexuality in women. But that is an inversion of that attraction such that you want to be that. That is the envy desire relationship as we just saw in the film Envy Desire. The AGP character is desirous of the transsexual body, but he's also envious of the transsexual body. And we're seeing that in Finster. I don't think it is a surprise that Finster, you know, got involved in the trans community, got involved in trans culture, you know, got involved in egg jokes and HRT jokes and started dating a trans woman and being around trans women. And, and, and now Finster is doing like OnlyFans trans porn, you know, <laughs> like getting into fetish content, you know, this is all sort of a manifestation of this sexual attraction towards sexuality, that this sexual orientation, it has its roots in the erotic. Now, I'm not saying that the, that that sexual like interest can't elaborate into a more, you know, non-sexual sexual, a, a non-sexual social identity which is this development of oneself as a woman. And I think it's very common to start off in this sort of like femboy, gender fluid way, but then, you know, you get exposed to, to the trans community. And, you know, he's talking about the death of femboys. There's not going to be femboys anymore because the, the trans community, this is how the indoctrination works. It's sort of like, you know, um, you sort of just get exposed to the idea that HRT is a possibility and you're not presented with possibility models of gender non-conforming males um, who are just, you know, accepting being gender non-conforming males, like just accepting being cross-dressing males, being, you know, and like recognizing that like, hey, I have AGP, I have a desire to be feminine and that's normal, that's, that's fine, like nothing wrong with that, but, you know, we're sort of like going down this medical pathway. And I think that desire for medicalization can be induced 
by exposure to egg culture, to trans culture, to people, you know, joking for years, like, are you on HRT? Like, are you trans? Are you an egg? When are you going to come out? Like the trans community, like pushes this on people that pushes it on femboys. And, you know, if you go online, if you go on Reddit, you go in these communities, like there is a, you know, if you go to like, you know, femboys subreddits, like there, there's just like, transsexual women on hrt are constantly posting in these femboy subreddits and part of the autogonophilia is that the the transition itself going in hrt itself becomes part of the sissification process it becomes part of the femboy process you know it becomes like the transition itself becomes fetishized such as that you sort of get you know you have a sexual fantasy of going on of on on, on hrt you have a sexual fantasy of fully feminizing yourself like you know ben's like list for why he wanted hrt was like oh i want to be pretty and and i want to have boobies it's not like I have a devastating medical condition that's like, you know, making me hate myself. No, it's a sort of, you're, you're drawn into it by euphoria. And that is very common for the AGP mindset where you're, you're pulled into transition from the euphoria. You experience so much euphoria in the feminization process that that euphoria pulls you down the medical pathway such, such, such that you want to continue feminizing yourself. You want to be as feminine as like possible. And, and, and then you start feeding into like um, porn culture, OnlyFans culture. You, you want to, you, you're surrounded by all these, you know, like uh, trans porn stars. And you sort of get pulled into this lifestyle. And I, I, I'm not saying that like adults shouldn't have the freedom to make these decisions for themselves, but I think we need to be, you know, more cautious here. We need to, you know, educate people that, you know, taking hormones, like you shouldn't do that lightly. You know, it, it destroys your fertility. It, it just, it makes you sterile. It has, you know, health complications. You know, you're coming a lifelong medical patient. You know, you, it sort of can make your dysphoria worse. It can like, you know, lead you down this pathway of, of getting these, you know, invasive irreversible surgeries. You know, you want, you start wanting to like castrate yourself and the castration becomes like a, a medical, a necessity given that you can't be on the, the testosterone blockers forever so and and then now there's no going back from that so you get stuck in this pathway and, I don't, and i'm not saying that like people can't find happiness in this pathway but i'm just saying that like just like there's a reason to lament the death of butch lesbians there's a reason to lament the the death of the femboys because i i, I think you know what what i want to see is that you know more males more men <laughs> learn to accept themselves as femboys and, and not get pulled into this you know medical pathway because you you shouldn't take this you know so so lightly it, be, it becomes a joke it becomes like a meme and you know people are like you know doing this for you know for the wrong reasons i think and i'm not saying that like i know finn's mindset you know whatever but you know i i know agp when i see it and i know auto gyno morphophilia when i see it and i think like you know and finn's an adult finn can make his decisions you know as he wants but i just feel like this whole egg culture thing is what bothers me because there's this assumption that like, Oh, like fem the death of femboys. I mean, come on, like, you know, we should teaching, teach people how to accept themselves. Like, like that should be first and foremost, like the, the narrative is like, accept yourself as you are. Like, you know, why would you want to make yourself a lifelong medical patient? why would you want to have to go into the doctor's office to get your levels checked for the rest of your life when you don't need to like if you can learn to love your body in its natural state that is what is most healthy and you know people can make decisions to modify their bodies you know get tattoos and crazy electrosurgery but i i, I think you know the, the trans community is torn in this paradox is like they they want to push this like radical 
you know, libertarian model of like, you know, it's, oh, we just have the freedom to choose our bodies. Like our bodies are like Mr. Potato Heads. We just like modify our bodies. It's like very libertarian. It's like full radical body autonomy based on like radical informed consent. And, you know, we're just sort of like, you know, it, it, it's very much like radical elective cosmetic surgery. And you see this in Andrea Chu's new article about, you know, the medical ethics of sex change. And it's like the argument that she makes is basically a libertarian radical informed consent model where, you know, we just have this fundamental right to modify our bodies. It's, it's very transhumanist where, but, but that transhumanist libertarian radical informed consent model of like, you know, we have the right to do whatever body mods we want. You know, I could like you know, <laughs> turn myself into a lizard or whatever, you know, like, and we have that right to own our bodies in that way. That's very different than the traditional sort of like, this is a medical condition is causing me like a lot of distress, a lot of dysphoria, a lot of dysfunction. Like I can't function. I can't live, you know, and, and that sort of medical model of, of, of gender dysphoria it's being replaced by this more like euphoria model where you're sort of getting pulled into it, pulled down the medical pathway in this more elective cosmetic procedure mindset. And, you know, and, and that, that those are contradictory ideas. You can't have it both ways. It's either elective cosmetic surgery in order to fulfill this, this desire for feminization, this desire for this inverted sexual orientation, this desire to be pretty, a desire to be pretty is not a medical condition. That's what I'm saying. Like a desire to be pretty is not something that needs to be funded by taxpayers and paid for by insurance. A desire to be pretty is an elective cosmetic procedure based on radical informed consent. And I just worry that the, all this egg culture stuff, all this like trans culture stuff, like the death of the femboys, the like death of the tomboys. I mean, this is concerning because we're turning people into lifelong medical patients when they had a real possibility to be happy as just femboys. Like Finster was doing seemingly doing well, like in you know, the, the femboy mindset for many years. <laughs> but like, I think he got pulled into egg culture. You know, all these trans people started asking him like, are you on hormones? Are you an egg? He started dating a trans woman. I think just being surrounded by trans culture, I think it takes people who were otherwise just be AGP males who are fine cross-dressing, fine being feminine. And it's sort of just like, induces this desire for medicalization and and once you go start going down that medical pathway that's when you really start hating your body that that's like it, it is very often the case that dysphoria new forms of dysphoria can manifest after you transition it's not that the, the, the dysphoria is all there all along it's just that you get the idea for transition in your head first and then the dysphoria comes afterward like the dysphoria emerges and people will say like well the dysphoria was there all along it was just repressed no it's not repressed it's being created de novo out of uh you know thin air like the dysphoria is coming after the fact you first get get pulled into the medical pathway through the euphoria of the AGP feminization. You get pulled into it from the euphoria of this, this sexualization of the feminization process. And then once you start going down that pathway, then the actual body dysmorphia, you start like really disliking your body and you start wanting to get all these surgeries that are unnecessary that sort of like harm your body and you know like so yeah i don't know that's all i wanted to say for this video um i just think like that this is a concerning trend i think finster is right that thin boys are going to die and just like th there's not going to be gender non-conforming males there's just going to be you know trans people and it's sort of like this is concerning because the transness the trans culture it is necessarily associated with the medical process and, and we're turning people into lifelong medical patients when you know there's there's another possibility model which is just learning to accept your natal sex learning to accept your body 
to sort of like get therapeutic intervention if you have body dysmorphia, like learning to feminize yourself in ways that aren't necessarily requiring of feminine of like this medical pathway, which causes you to be, you know, to become infertile, to become sterile, to increase your risk of like, you know, stroke and like, you know, blood clots. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's like, this is serious stuff. Like putting your body on cross sex hormones, that that is no joke. That that is a very serious thing. And like we're just encouraging people to experiment with this. Oh, just experiment, you know, whatever. Just take a little hormones, no big deal. Like, you know, this is like serious stuff. And I think, you know, this radical informed consent, libertarian, transhumanist, autogynophilic, sexual fantasy model, I think it's concerning because, you know. We're, we're medicalizing people who otherwise would be perfectly healthy in their bodies. So, okay, that's my concern. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.